Hello, I'm Glenn Nierman, Steinhardt Professor of Music Education at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln's Glenn Corp School of Music, and I'm also President-Elect of the National Association for Music Education. You, as pre-service music educators, are about to enter the profession at a very exciting time. We're on the cusp of some real breakthroughs nationally, particularly in our advocacy efforts to have recognized music as part of the core curriculum. Further, we're about to introduce a revised version of our national music standards. For at least two decades now, we've been on a journey to help students acquire the knowledge and the skills necessary to participate authentically in the arts for a lifetime. The 1994 music standards emphasize what every student should know and be able to do, products. Now, with the revised standards, we will emphasize a process-oriented nature of music and music learning. My purpose today is to help us to understand the role of measurement and assessment in a revised standards environment, and secondly, to preview what summative assessment tasks, called cornerstone assessments, might look like in this environment. Most of you were probably evaluated using a model that progressed something like this. Your teacher wrote objectives in a lesson plan, and then they taught to that particular content. They identified the skills and the knowledge that you should have. Then they gave you some time to practice the skill or to learn the content, and then they tested you on that content. The revised standards are based on a new model for teaching that turns the process around and ask the teacher to begin thinking about the test first. Well, actually, we hope you'll be thinking about assessing student growth using a series of authentic musical tasks rather than just one test, but a little bit more on that later. A backward design framework uh, based on the book Understanding by Designs by McTy and Wiggins from 2005 was selected in our revised National Standards model to assist educators in first determining acceptable evidence of attainment and then designing the best path for achieving those desired results. Well, actually that's not quite right either. We don't want to think just about the test. Did you ever wonder why we hear less and less about tests and measurement and more and more about assessing and assessment? Well, that's because a test is simply a measurement device, a way of gathering information. I can write a 16 measure melody that contains some rhythms and articulations we've been singing or playing in band, chorus, or orchestra in the music we've been rehearsing. That then will test your mastery of certain rhythms and articulations. Assessment is a much broader process than that. It draws upon measurements and other tasks to determine if growth, and that word growth is key, if growth has taken place in the individual. By the way, determining if growth has taken place in the learner has become a very important element in teacher evaluation now, termed value-added assessment. Currently, I've been working with a team of individuals from across the country to design sample cornerstone assessment tasks that will eventually be a part of the revised standard content. I want to emphasize that the example I'm about to show you is simply a draft at this point, but it will serve us well in terms of uh, understanding some of the ways in which cornerstone assessments are different from traditional tests. Here's a sample of a cornerstone assessment. The draft performance standard would go something like this. Using pieces currently rehearsed by an ensemble, Students will select a work that enables multiple expressive interpretations, identify expressive performance challenges, set expressive performance goals, document processes of addressing the challenges and accomplishment attained, and finally, a complete an evaluation comparing observations from two points in time. Now, you will note that this is a very different sort of uh, measurement from uh, the 16 major rhythm and articulation test that I described earlier. I'd like to now point out some of the characteristics of cornerstone assessments embedded in this draft sample, and in so doing, we'll have, I think, a better understanding of what a cornerstone assessment task really is. The opening portion of this particular um, 
Cornerstone assessment says, using pieces currently rehearsed by an ensemble. So in other words, the, the uh, material for this assessment is going to be drawn from the curriculum and things that were embedded in the curriculum itself. It's not an extra test that the teacher devised after the fact. Secondly, if we read on, students will select a work, okay? It's not the teacher selecting the test, but the students themselves are going to select from the pieces or songs they've been uh, rehearsing. If we move down a little bit further, we'll notice uh, that where I have the number three there, that we're going to set some expressive performance goals and document the uh, processes of addressing the challenges that they find. So there again, you see that emphasis on the word process rather than product at the end. It's not just whether you can sing or play this correctly, but it, it has to do with what kinds of what process, what kinds of processes did you use uh, in order to attain that particular goal. Finally, near the end of the description of the assessment task, you will see that uh, the um, uh, student is to complete an evaluation comparing observations from two points in time. And that is very key here because now we see the importance of growth here. We're going to see what the student is able to do with respect to this particular piece at the beginning. Then there's some time to practice, identify the challenges and so forth. And then for the student to do this, uh, sing or play this piece again. And so you have these comparisons and we're looking at the process whereby they got to the final uh, goal of this particular performance. All right, so uh, I think you can see that assessment has changed quite a bit. It's not just about constructing tests anymore. Imagine the fun your students are gonna have being engaged in authentic musical tasks. And also imagine the pride that you're gonna feel as a young music educator being able to document the musical growth that has taken place in the students in your classroom. Here are some characteristics to help us understand better this concept of cornerstone assessments, which again comes from Bataille and Wiggins' book, Understanding by Design. First of all, cornerstone assessments are embedded in the curriculum. Uh, they are drawn from the task that you are working on every day uh, within the rehearsal or in the classroom. A second characteristic is that these cornerstone assessments recur over the grades in terms of ever increasing spirals of complexity. So uh, um, a performer in the fifth grade who has just picked up their violin or their new instrument uh, is going to have the same type of task, but it will take place uh, with much less um, detail with respect to the kinds of things that the student will be asked to do. A third characteristic of cornerstone assessments is that they occur in authentic contexts. By this we mean it's not just filling in the blank of a bubble sheet, but the students are actually playing or singing the music that they have been rehearsing. Another characteristic involves understanding and transfer. It's not enough just to repeat in a rote learning sort of way what the student uh, has learned and demonstrate that they can remember it to the teacher, but can they transfer it to another situation which is similar? If another characteristic of cornerstone assessment involves the integration of 21st century skills. We hear a lot about these skills, critical thinking, technology use, teamwork, and all of these kinds of 21st century skills should be integrated with demonstrating music knowledge and skills in a cornerstone assessment. Then, another characteristic involves the evaluation of the uh, performance with established rubrics. And this takes a bit of time, of course, to, to delineate the various uh, levels of attainment in the rubric, but it helps the student understand in a holistic type of way the kinds of things that they are doing with the task as a whole. Another characteristic involves engaging students in meaningful learning. Again, this is not just a fill in the blank, is this a quarter note, is this the correct rhythm, or and so forth, but the students are actually engaged in making music, and so the learning is indeed meaningful. A final characteristic that McTie points out has to do with providing content for student portfolios. 
And so often we're asked to document, particularly again this idea of growth and uh, when we have recordings of students performing, uh, first at the beginning and then working with some instruction and then an, uh, another performance in time, we begin to collect uh, with videos and so forth a good um, set of information that can be used in student portfolios.